a video of building a dulcimer. So I got these plans. Actually, my brother sent me the plans from Folk Craft Mountain Dulcimer Hourglass style. Plans also had this shape here, which I wanted to do to be more like the Viking ship shape, which is what my brother wanted. So here's what it looks like so far. I still have to do some of the art around the sound holes and on the sides for some Nordic style design. It's a great set of plans. I went ahead and cut out little plastic templates for the head, top view and side view for some bracing and the little uh, shape by the bridge for strumming. So when I build another one, which I will, because these are fun to build. I'll have these in the box with the plans ready to go. So Viking ship head, I did some drawings uh, of ideas for how to carve the head. These ideas came from this Viking art book and I just went with the cover art and did a version of that. Unfortunately, I didn't shoot any of the footage of me carving it, but I used a Dremel tool and a uh, you know chisels and files so now there's just a little more art to do on it and several coats of lacquer and then we'll deliver it so here's the rest of the build the sides are cedar boards from an old swing set the spruce top and mahogany for the back We'll cut out the shape on a thick piece of plastic so I can trace it on to the wood to make the body for it. We've got the three quarter inch pine boards. They were like old shelves and some of that cedar swing set boards glue them together, and then cut out the, the body form. Now I'll start prepping the sides so they're the right length to bend into the form. They're pretty flexible so far, but I don't want to force it, so we'll bend them later, but we just got to get it cut off so it'll fit. And then we'll plane them down so they're a good thickness, like two or three millimeters. And then I'll trim it off so it's the right height. A little higher than it needs to be because we're going to be able to sand it down later. We'll go ahead and cut the tail block. This is an old piece of furniture leg or something. It's like laminated mahogany. You just put it over the plans and trace out the shape and measure carefully. And cut it off. If it has a hole in it. had to laminate a piece of maple to the tail block because it was not quite thick enough. So I have some leftover maple from another guitar build. So I always save all these little scraps because you never know when you're gonna need them. And then just get it sanded flat, use a little tight bond and glue it up. Let it rest till the next day. And now we'll finally get the rest of it fitted by tracing 
and then I use the pole saw to get the rough shape and then take a ride on the belt sander and get the rest of it just dialed in so it fits nicely. Now we let them cool down and they'll be flexible to fit in the form. So I don't have to force them anymore. And now we glue up the headpiece and we'll glue up the tail block. And then we'll get ready to put in the kerf lining. Okay, now we got the tail block glued in. And the headstock's glued in. So what I need to do in order to install the lining, you know, the, the curved lining that goes along this inner edge, but in order to be able to clip a little piece onto there, I need some clearance right in here. So what we'll do, and I saw this in a guitar building book, is put a little peg about halfway up you know just put a piece of dowel put like three pegs on each side and then it'll sit up you know we'll be able to use the spring clips to glue on our kerf lining there we go now it sits up high enough i'll be able to glue on those linings once I get them ready. Putting in these temporary spacers to make sure the sides are held out to the form. And we're starting to plane and shape some braces. When it comes time to clamp the top and the bottom, I'm going to make spool clamps. We got to cut a bunch of one inch dowels. Looks like a curtain rod piece of wood. With a little miter saw, a nice square cut. And then we'll put a bolt through it. With some cork we'll be able to like cl clamp it and with the wing nut screwed on we'll show you later but i'm going to cut all these up as many as i can before having to buy more be long enough so 31 inches well it's 30.13 but i'm i'm gonna cut it at 31 so i have room to play with the shape it's got a bevel here a scoop here for um the strings to go over and then the frets start in here and the nut goes here mm -hmm. 
The plans has the fret scale chart in the upper corner and I'm using millimeters because I've had better luck with the millimeter scale and we just mark and measure carefully. I measure three or four times to be sure I'm right on the mark so I get a good scale. I have this dovetail saw with a fret stop guide on it and you set the depth of the blades so you don't cut the frets too deep and I have this little jig I made out of a guitar book to cut uh, fret slots. Works out really well. Then we go in and use a little super glue and tap the frets in and clamp them down and trim the frets off and file down the edges. Here we're cutting out the little groove down by the bridge where you'll be strumming. It's like a little half circle and I just cut little channels and then chisel, sand it down. Now we're cutting out the rough shape of the top and we'll get it ready to glue onto the fretboard. We're going to get ready to glue the back so I pre-fit all the spool clamps so I don't have to fuss with the wing nuts when, it, when I actually have the glue on there and then you don't want to be wasting time spinning wing nuts. Okay, this had a chance to dry. We'll take off these clamps and then work on our braces. Now we're going to button it up. I did put a sealing coat on the inside so that way the wood can breathe the same it does on the outside with the same kind of sealant after I do a little bit of uh, design and paint on the outside. But we leveled it all out. We'll get some glue on there and then the spool clamps and button up the box. the sanding get all the edges nice we're gonna install the tuners next For the tail, it's got the marks here for you to put your pins. So I just folded this over and matched it up with my marks. 
Here, I'll hold that nail while we whack it with a hammer. Just a little tap. Leave enough for the loop to go over it. And then we'll do the rest. All right, they're not sticking up too far. And it won't be in your way. Get up over the bridge. And we'll be strumming here. Let's throw some strings on. We got these Diodario four string dulcifer with nickel plated steel. It's a 12, 12, and a 14 and 22. Because the, the high strings are doubled up like a like on a 12 string or a mandolin. Okay, we got some strings on it. The accent's a little high, but we can test drive it. So we've got a D, an A, a D, and a double D. So we start out with this. good start on our design for the sides of the dulcimer this will be the tail block or the stern of the ship and I actually like drew just this half and established the pattern and then I folded it over put it on the little light box and then I was able to trace that save me a little time and establish my design now this is gonna take a minute several hours but I'm not gonna complain because this is fun although it does take a long time but the results are going to be pretty stunning and I'm looking forward to it now some of this stuff I used a book for reference to get this little chain pattern which seems to be a recurring pattern in some of the old Nordic art and then for the tail I started just improvising with my own imagination inspired by the Nordic art because, you know, it's now the 21st century. We give it our own twist, make it my own. And this goes up under here. So what's fun about these patterns is just getting some, some nice overlapping shapes. And what I'm going to do, instead of drawing this all the way to each end on the paper, I'll get a nice drawing up to the ends here. I'll transfer that to the wood. But then this repeating pattern, after a while of practicing, I could draw it straight on the wood lightly with pencil. We're using this transfer paper. It's like carbon paper and you trace over your design with a ballpoint pen and it gets the design onto the wood and then I'll ink it in with this liner and just move along all the way down. It's gonna take a while. archival ink and a micron pen designs that were inspired by viking art from a viking art book i'll put a link below and where the plans came from and the little tailpiece section is kind of cool so now we're gonna take the strings and the hardware off give the neck and fretboard a, a light sanding sand down the back and clean it up and shoot a few coats of lacquer on it.
Mountain Dulcimer is done. The Viking Dulcimer with a little carved Viking face. With fresh dragon breath. And I lowered the action slightly. And here it goes. Thank you for waiting.